Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think Malcolm is going to give our first greeting. Welcome to Cars Lane. Whether this is your first time or whether you've been here for a long time, we welcome you here. And we welcome those that are live streaming um, and hope that you will find the service uh, very helpful. Um, we want to pray for Ruth and Chris, uh, our minister and our, our church member, um, who are taking a sabbatical uh, starting this coming week. So we want to pray for them. We've had a, a message from one of our church member couples who've moved away, Chris and Julie. They wish us happy birthday. They're thinking about us all today, and thanks for the sun, last Sunday's farewell. So we are an inclusive church. We believe in inclusive church, a church which celebrates and affirms every person and does not discriminate. We will continue to challenge the church where it comes, continues to discriminate against people on grounds of disability, economic power, ethnicity, gender and gender identity, learning disability, mental health, neurodiversity, or sexuality. We believe in a church that welcomes and serves all people in the name of Jesus Christ, which is scripturally faithful, which seeks to proclaim the gospel afresh for each generation, and which in the power of the Holy Spirit allows all people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In this church, we've got very clever during lockdown, so if you don't know this already, you're going to learn a Cars Lane thing this morning. Thank you for all being respectful with face masks. So the easiest way, in a way, to share peace is we just do this, which is British Sign Language for Peace. As it's Easter Day, we're going to wild it up. You ready? So we're going to do peace and joy. Ready? Peace and joy. So let's share peace and joy. If anyone knows BSL better than me and I've got it wrong, please forgive and educate me afterwards. Peace and joy. Welcome to worship together on this Easter day. This is a day of joy and celebration for the church. Even in these terrible times of trouble, we hold fast to hope because Jesus is alive. Death does not defeat, love wins. God is present with us and present with everyone around the world, whatever situation they're in. You may have noticed, as a couple of people have already said to me this morning, where are the flowers? Where are the flowers? We thought we'd start the service a little bit with some thoughts of Good Friday. Many of us aren't able to take part in Good Friday worship. And we thought it's important not just to go from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, but in Sunday service too, to acknowledge Good Friday. So although we've just said Happy Easter, we're going to take you back a, a little bit with some resonances of Good Friday, recognizing the feeling that the first disciples might have had on that first Easter morning before the women had gone to the tomb, before they knew for sure what was happening. So we begin with Good Friday, and we'll lead you through to Easter. There are two readings. The first one is from the book of Job, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. A mortal born of woman, few of days and full of trouble, comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can. Since their days are determined and the number of their months is known to you and you have appointed the bounds that they cannot pass, look away from them and desist that they may enjoy, like labourers, their days. 
And then from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, immediately following the crucifixion, verses 40 to 42. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, giver of life, Jesus Christ, Lord of life, Holy Spirit, pulse of life, open our hearts and minds so that we can come closer to you. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ, amen. Jesus is in the tomb. The disciples are still processing what had happened. The tomb is closed by a big stone. The stone is heavy, and it feels heavy in the heart of all those who have believed in Jesus, who have left all that they had and knew behind and follow him. They did not always understand what Jesus was saying, but there was something in him, like a magnet. People felt attracted by his words, his way of living, to pray with him, to eat with him, to learn something new about their true self every day to experience a God not far away but present and caring. But now all is gone. Like Job says, a mortal born of woman comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. We have received a little pebble. I would like to ask you, if possible, to hold it at the center of the palm in your hand. And I would like to ask you to look at it and imagine that this is the stone that closes Jesus' grave. This is the stone that represents your problems, our anxieties, our difficulties, 
all those things that take away a little bit of vitality every day. Look at the stone and imagine its weight growing heavier and heavier in your palm and in your heart. Where are you, Jesus? You told us that you were the way, the truth, and the life. Did you really have to disappear behind this stone and make it even more burdensome? Beloved, why are you weeping? Please join in the words in dark type as we say together this response for Easter. When everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never rise again, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. The sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of the resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope and joy will live in us each day and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. Amen. Today we celebrate Easter. The stone has been removed and the tomb is empty. The pebble that you have been given recharges in natural light and artificial light and glows in the dark. May this be a symbol for us, reminding us that death is not the last word and that Jesus has conquered it. No matter how difficult a situation can be, God's love turned that stone into a lightning pebble on our path. Amen. Amen. We sing together Hymn number 305, Low in the Grave He Lay, Jesus my Saviour. Mm -hmm. 
And please, if you are able, stand. Our Easter reading is from John, chapter 20, starting at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. But he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb 
and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said. Uh, She told them he had said these things to her. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Thank you, Anne. We're going to think a little about that passage now. Uh, Before we do, just to tell you something I should have told you at the beginning of the service, is that on the tables over there, there are different colouring implements and writing implements. There's paper. There's also a quite clever Easter card that you make by folding it in. I would love some to put pictures of on the church Facebook page, in all truth. And there are, in fact... um, if we've got, I don't know if there are any children here. There are 16 of these hidden around the room. One is hidden here. There are 15 others. If anyone is, wants to find them and colour them in, feel free. You can move around and still listen. I'm sure you do at home when you've got the radio on. Listen and move around. So do feel free at any point to get up and do colouring um, or make a card, or you can do it at any point during the service. Thank you. There's a saying... History is made by the people who show up, which I think is probably true, and sometimes that's a worry because the people we're not keen on are the ones who show up, and sometimes it's fantastic because people who want peace and justice are the people who show up. These women, these friends of Jesus, get to be the first witnesses of the resurrection Mary sees first the empty tomb, then some other friends follow. But it is the women who first see Jesus. And in the other Gospels, we also find that the women see Jesus first. They go to tell the rest of the disciples and get varying responses. Mostly in one of them, it's Mark that says, he said they thought the women were telling a tall tale. Great language there in the Bible. These women were the ones who met Jesus really because they're the ones that in every gospel show up. You may know that we're quite fans of the website Queer Theology here. And Father Shea says on that website, the story of Easter is deliciously subversive. Women were the first witnesses of the resurrection. Women were the ones who found out that everything had changed because they were the ones who were faithful to Jesus. They didn't hide or run. They stayed until the end and then they came back to make sure that things were done right. In those times, the word of women wasn't allowed to stand up in court. So even in the resurrection, the message that God is sending out is that those on the margins, the outcasts, the ones despised, 
They are the bearers of good news. They are the ones we should be listening to. Even with the threat of soldiers at the tomb, the women were the first ones there. They wanted to go and pay proper respect to Jesus' body. As we heard at the beginning of the service from Donald, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus had got Jesus a tomb and they'd put some spices on his body, but there was still more to be done. As in many societies, women were acknowledged, but they weren't treated with equal respect or equal role in law. But yet God doesn't line up a row of male magistrates to go and witness Jesus' first words resurrected, but no, his friends were there, these women. It reminded me when I was reading the different resurrection accounts from the, the four Gospels, actually of Jesus' birth, because the people who show up there are shepherds, people in a very lowly occupation, not thought much of in society, and very rich people, strangers from a different faith, who also would have been outcasts but in a very different way. And at Jesus' resurrection, we have his very rich friends, Nicodemus and Joseph, who've done the right thing by him on Good Friday. And on Easter morning, we have his friends who were women there. People who mostly are not really listened to or taken that seriously. Mary Magdalene probably was a rich patron of Jesus, but being a woman, she was still in a vulnerable position in society. And as Father Shea said, they wouldn't have been listened to in a court. Their word as witnesses would have been seen as not necessarily reliable. So who does Jesus choose, who does God choose to be the first people to hear the words coming out of the resurrected Jesus' mouth and say, we have seen him? Women. Not, in fact, the 12, now 11, men that Jesus has been going around with and who get called the disciples, though Jesus had lots of disciples, lots of followers. But actually, these faithful women, they showed up. They were there for him. In Mark and Matthew and Luke, they're the only ones there on Easter morning, and they go to tell the other disciples in one of the Gospels, they go, okay, let's go and see. And in the other two, they just don't believe what the women are saying. Even though these are women, they know, know Jesus. And that's not their fault. It's the society they were in. To repeat some of those words from Father Shea, from Queer Theology, in the resurrection, the message God is sending is that those on the margins, the outcasts, the ones despised, are the bearers of the good news. These are the ones we should be listening to. A game that people with a lot of power play, and you will recognize this, I think, is to try and distract us from what they're doing, to tell us that it's really somebody else's fault. Usually a minority group, and very often a minority group who are vulnerable. The false news that wishes to set us against each other, arguing amongst ourselves at how it's us and other people like us in vulnerability that are really the problem, so that we don't notice what people in power are doing. They tell us not to listen to the voices of people considered outcast, people on the margins, people that they would like us to despise. False news wants us to ignore and silence the voices of people God would have as bearers of witness, the people God would have us listen to. In the resurrection narrative, we're asked to notice and listen to the people not usually treated too seriously. They have their role, yes, but they're not necessarily credible witnesses. Even this group of men who have known these women for years in most of the Gospels, don't really take much notice of what they say. In God's kingdom, though, it's these people, people not taken too seriously by the rest of society, who are entrusted with the most wonderful and life-changing news. So Easter reminds us to be careful when we read the news, yes, but to be careful who we're listening to. Let's be aware of the game that's being played with us. 
Who is the media currently telling you that you shouldn't take too seriously or worry about or treat as credible? Who amongst us do they want us to fear? My own observation at the moment is that people who are asylum seekers are being treated as if they're a problem. I, would, I don't want to get too political, but we can't avoid being political if we're fighting for justice. Part of the reason people are seeking asylum is because of war. Wars that, a lot of the time, we're making quite a lot of money from in this country because we're selling arms, sometimes to both sides. And then we have a problem with people wanting to live somewhere in safety. We're being told that asylum seekers are a problem, that asylum seekers are people we shouldn't take notice of. Also, quite frighteningly at the moment, and you'll notice this being an inclusive affirming church, I'm sure we notice this on the news, people who are transgender are currently being treated as if they're the problem. Although people who are transgender are a very tiny minority of society, you would think if you read certain bits of paper that purport to be newspapers that transgender people are taking over the world and causing some awful, terrible problem. Whereas, of course, that's not the case. People who are transgender just want to live in authenticity as themselves, just like you have the luxury of doing. We are being told not to take seriously or listen to certain people. And you wonder what people in big power are doing while they're trying to get us arguing amongst ourselves. As Malcolm so fantastically read at the beginning of this service, this is an inclusive and affirming church. We stand for love. We support the rights of refugees and asylum seekers. We support the rights of people who are LGBT. We are opposed to conversion therapy. We do not believe the lies and hatred that would suggest these siblings of ours are anything other than important and loved and precious to God. We get to choose what we take notice of. We get to choose who we listen to. The resurrection story reminds us to take care who we listen to, who we trust, who we think is credible. A God who reminds us who God is and what love is about by people who we consider on the margins, people who are outcasts, sometimes despised. God makes them the bearers of good news. God is saying, listen to these people. Don't miss what I'm saying through them. Let us make sure we're listening when God is speaking, whoever God is speaking through. Let us make sure we're noticing the people God wants us to notice. And if God is calling us to bear witness, let us not be afraid, but to share what we know of our beautiful Jesus. If you see yourself as quite powerful and influential, we encourage you to use that for Jesus and to speak up for justice. I believe we're all powerful in some way, it's actually almost dangerous to think that we're not. We all have some kind of influence. But if you think that you're more of an outcast person who people ignore, that it's hard for you to say what you think, or that people might not take you seriously, please be encouraged today. God uses people just like you to bear witness to the most exciting things that God is up to. God doesn't just choose loudmouths and big people with big wallets or people who can buy off newspapers. God uses us, you and me. Jesus wants to be the kind of friend that you would show up for. And I want to encourage you that Jesus is the friend who shows up for you every day. Let's be people who show up for Jesus, who bear witness to God's amazing good news, and people who make sure we listen and take notice to the people God is pointing us to. Amen. I invite you just to have a couple of moments of quiet just to let anything sink in that God is saying to us through whatever way.
Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to show you that we're your real friends and be the people who show up for you. Help us to be prepared to share your good news, just simply what's going on and what what you've done in our lives, just like your first witnesses did. Help us, Lord, to listen to the people who speak your truth, to speak up for justice where we can, to make sure that we don't ignore people who you want us to listen to. Lord, we are your friends. Help us to be even better friends to you, faithful friends, who are there for you just as you were there for us. We thank you for the wonder of your resurrection, your reminder that it is love that wins. We pray that you'll encourage us with this news every day. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite some people who are going to share the joy of the resurrection. I've forgotten to tell this to Matt, uh, but Matt, and to the people on the live stream, I'm so sorry we need to very temporarily mute you, but we don't have permission to live stream this reading. But it will be quite short, and maybe you'd like to look at the... Uh, Good Friday display that turned into Easter as there's just a few moments here. Thank you.
That was called Jesus and Dancing by Anne Weems. Thank you all. We join together in our next hymn, which in the books is 298 and will be on the screen. Um, again, BSL people can tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe that in sign language this is Alleluia. So feel free to Alleluia if you would like. Let's sing together. Christ the Lord is risen today. So we now pray for others and the world. Let us pray. Glorious God, 
Every fibre of our being rejoices today, for Jesus is alive. We thank and praise you for the signs of new life and new beginnings that surround us. Flowers peeping through the soil, baby birds and new lambs, longer days and lighter nights. We are grateful for all of these examples of regeneration, reflecting the wonder and joy of Jesus' resurrection. We thank and praise you for the signs of resurrection in our own lives. Perhaps there has been an opportunity this week for rest and relaxation. Maybe a new family member or friend. Something new that has been learnt or the beginning of a recovery. We pause now to thank you for these signs in our own lives. Lord Jesus, as the women came to the tomb in sorrow, their eyes full of tears, we are aware of so much sorrow that still exists in our world. We lift to you now all the places where conflict still exists, between nations, between factions, between families. We continue to pray for those fleeing Ukraine, Ethiopia, Afghanistan, amongst many other areas and for those who remain in those places. We pray for the countries that they have fled to, that they may be welcome with open arms rather than hostility and suspicion. We lift to you those affected by natural disasters. We think this week about the flooding we have seen in South Africa and more flooding and landslides, landslides in the Philippines. We lift to you all those who are in pain, those who are suffering with ill health, whether physically or mentally, those who are full of grief, loneliness or despair, those who are struggling to make ends meet and are overwhelmed by the uncertainty of the future. We pause now to pray for individuals or circumstances known to us. Lord, we deeply desire that your resurrected presence will fill those people and places of pain and redeem them, bringing the new life that is so dearly needed. Touch every heart with your eternal love, filling each seemingly hopeless situation with the promise of resurrected, everlasting hope. We bring to you all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, in the name of of our resurrected Jesus. Amen. And we say together now the Lord's Prayer in whatever uh, language or form we find most comfortable. Our Father, who art in heaven, Thank you. You will have maybe already seen on the screen that it says, Thanksgiving, what are you thankful for today? What does Easter mean to you? The part of the communion liturgy where there is a great thanksgiving is really about making sure that as we come to communion, we think about what God has done for us and what we're grateful for. So rather than Christina and I leading you in several pages of liturgy, which we could do, we thought you could write your own liturgy. If you're comfortable, um, and if you would like not to do this, please just sit with your hands on your lap and then people will leave you alone. We know that some people are a bit shy, that's fine. But if you're comfortable, um, please just speak to some people near you, just saying, what are you thankful for today? And what does Easter mean for you? If you're having a really rough day, 
Maybe just listen to what other people are saying that might even cheer you up, you never know. Or it might be that you're beyond cheering, but that you'd still like to hear what other people are grateful for and what Easter means to you. So you have a few minutes now just to take part in the Thanksgiving. People at home on live stream, uh, please do this too. Just think about what are you thankful for today? What does Easter mean to you? I'm going to draw you back together. I don't know if anyone's uh, loud or brave enough to just shout out a couple of things I can repeat for everyone. Um, what are you thankful for today? Just a couple of things. The sun. The sun. Yeah. Dogs. Dogs. Say again. Family and family. Yeah. Friends. That we can gather safely. That we can gather safely. Yeah, absolutely. And what does Easter mean to you? These may be longer, I realise. We'll just have a couple, and then we can talk about others after church too. Anything? Say again. The gift of love through our Lord. Yeah. And sharing it. Yeah, absolutely. Being witnesses to that good news. And like our readers were telling us, it's a, a thing for joy. And not necessarily a kind of ethereal kind of, oh, isn't everything great? But actually, these were people who understood what grief was and still found a path to joy with Jesus. It isn't, um, it isn't frothy and unsubstantiated joy. It, it's deep stuff. Yeah, thank you very much. We're going to join together um, as we continue in Thanksgiving with uh, number 78, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart as part of our thanksgiving. You'll notice that the words say, and then will the weak say I am strong and the poor say I am rich. Not because they're deluded, but because being with God gives you a different perspective and gives you a richness that isn't about money, but is about knowing God. So we sing together.
someone wanted to add that they're grateful for a cup of coffee waiting at home and some peace and quiet. We hope you'll endure just a few more minutes with us at the end of the service before you dash to do that, but we understand. <laughs> So let us now have communion together. This is an open table and all of you are invited. Um, the bread is gluten-free and this is non-alcoholic wine. And um, Ruth is going to serve the bread and I will follow with the wine. If you please could hold both and then we are going together to have the bread and the wine. So let us hear the institution as it is written in the first Corinthian. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come, share, gather around this resurrection table, a place of eternal hope. For here is bread and wine, symbols of flesh and blood raised to new life in Jesus Christ. So come and gather, eat and drink, and be one in him. We come, we come in, in the, the name, name of Jesus, Jesus the, risen the risen one. one. Amen. Amen.
Let us eat and drink together and remember our beautiful risen Jesus as we communion and fellowship with each other in this risen life. Let us pray together. And so we say, loving God, loving God we, we thank you that you have fed us today, this day of resurrection. Let us live the risen life of Jesus, whose name we bear every day. Amen. Let us sing our final hymn, Time Be the Glory, number 313. So let us receive the blessing and please join me in the bold type. Risen Lord, you always go before us, preparing the way. 
leading us further along your path of life. Today, of all days, there is no more fear. We praise and adore you. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Easter.